This video is going to show you how to hook up four LEDs to this magical little Conway board. You can control their brightness with a twist of a knob and we're going to hook up a battery pack to it so you can turn them on and off with a flick of one switch. Then we're going to retrofit my haunted house so that we can have all our lights on the first floor powered by this board. That's this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. In the past on the channel, you've seen me use a lot of LEDs. Now I came up with a really cool coin slot method for powering one LED where you just stick a CR2032 into the back of uh, some foam and it powers your LED. And that's great. But when you have more than one LED, up to four, you want to use something like this little Conway board. This is going to allow you to control the brightness of it with this one little knob. It's powered by either a USB or in this video I'm going to show you how to hook up a battery pack for some CR2032 batteries. Now the mastermind behind this is David over at Terraintronics. He's got a YouTube channel and he also has a website terraintronics.com. You can check that out. He's got a lot of really in-depth videos on this little chip and we're going to have a little interview with him. He's going to give us a little lesson on some LEDs and some history behind this board. Then when we're done, we're going to go over to my haunted house and retrofit it so that every lantern on the first floor of this build is powered by one little chip. All right, let's go talk with David, then let's get crafting. All right, everybody, we are here today with David Roach of Terraintronics, and he's going to school us all on some LEDs and his Conway board. So David, why don't you take it away and uh, fill us in. Sure thing. Thank you, John. Uh, hello, folks. Uh, my name is David from uh, Terraintronics. This is uh, an LED. You guys are probably familiar with these. This is a three millimeter LED. You, they, you also get them in five millimeter LEDs, depending on the size of the terrain that you're building and so on. Uh, I've got a collection of them here. Here's four flashing ones that John's very fond of. Uh, but we'll move those out of the way just for now, because I want to teach you a little bit. Every LED has a long leg and a short leg. The long leg is the most positive side and connects to the positive side of a battery. The, the short leg is the negative and connects to the negative. So every battery on the planet you see, like this one, has a positive side. You can see the little symbol up here, and the other side is obviously negative. Now, even something big like a PP3 battery, a 9 volt, has, see that symbol? There's a negative, there's a positive. So if I hook this onto here, wow, we've got a very bright LED. So bright that the camera can't really even handle it. Let's Everyone's used to way. seeing that on my channel. They've seen that <laughs> plenty of times. <laughs> If we flip it though, oh no, my LED didn't light up, okay? So if, you, if your LEDs are ever not lighting up, that's the first thing to check, did you wire them the right way around? But not all is lost because I hook it the other way around, it'll still work again, okay? So you're not gonna blow anything up, you're not gonna destroy anything, but there is something to be very aware of with these LEDs, okay? Um, the brightness of an LED is not given by the voltage of the battery that you're driving. It's actually driven by something called the current, which is kind of like in water terms, uh, how many gallons per second are flowing. So these CR2032 batteries are inherently faulty. They're built with um, uh, something that limits the, app, the amount of output current. But if I take a nine volt battery like this, okay, and this can drive a lot more current. I'm gonna take the long leg, put it on the plus, and the negative on there, I want you guys to just see how long this manages to stay on for. Bang. And <laughs> that's, that's it. it. We've, we've just destroyed an LED. Yeah. That's going to go in the trash just in case I try and use it in another project. Okay, so we have to limit the current that we're driving. And so, you know, one of the ways we can test this is this is an LED tester. Um, you know, for instance, I can put two milliamps in and I get one brightness. I can put 30 milliamps in and get really mm. super duper bright. That'll burn your retina. Okay, so normally we would use a resistor of some kind, and that, that's a resistor right there uh, on each LED, and that's a pain uh, to solder up and so on. So what we have is this little board. This little mm. board is a Conway board uh, that we make here at Traintronics. Uh, it's designed to drive four LEDs, so you're gonna hook up your LEDs down here, and it has one control for the brightness for all, which is so really convenient. And just so people know, that's really what's adjusting, like you said, the brightness that you just showed us in that LED tester. Sure. So we can yes, bring exactly. it all the way down the or we can bring the brightness all the way up. So I can make it really bright 
or just by turning the, sorry for the camera work here, but by turning the screwdriver here, I can make it really bright and flick. We gotta bring it over a little bit more. Or really low. All right, let's try that. So with the turn, I can make yeah, it really there you bright go. and really dim. That's awesome. Okay. So that's the Conway board, really, really easy to use. Um, you're gonna hook up your LEDs by here. There's documentation all on GitHub, it's all open source. Um, you're gonna bring either USB power in here, or if you have a battery or a battery pack. So I'm quite fond of these little battery packs. These mm, little battery yeah. packs, you get them on Amazon, we'll put a link below. Uh, they already come with a little switch in them, and it uses a pair of those batteries, John, that you're really fond of, the oh, yeah. CR2032 batteries, right? They yeah. don't last forever. Uh, you'll get about uh, three days of constant light out of these. Um, it's awesome. But essentially, but essentially, you're going to take these two wires and pop them in to the holes where this imaginary resistor is going. That resistor is there if you use... Um, a big USB power bank, but if you're going to use something cool and easy like this, you're just going to solder in there and there, yeah. and you're done. That's exactly what this little board is. Look, power supply, Conway board, LEDs. And what I'm using to hook up the yeah. LEDs, and this is really important, these little DuPont cables. You buy them in strips of 40 from Amazon for less than a couple of dollars. And it just makes life so easy. No soldering, no, uh, you know, none of that, right? You know, you can see here, if I want to add um, an LED, I'll take two of them and I just pop the legs into the holes in the end of the connectors. And that's it. And you know, maybe, maybe I want to secure that a little bit harder. I might use a little bit of hot glue or something. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I'm done. And I can test it and I can change it and so on very easily. Yeah, so my plan, everybody's going to see it coming up in the video, is we're going to hook up my haunted house, the whole first level, uh, using this Conway board. And my plan was to use the jumpers because it really doesn't get any easier than that. Um, but uh, David introduced me to this really cool little tool that you'll see in just a few minutes that's going to allow you to uh, use wiring and wire the uh, LED right to that by just basically twisting it right on. It's really awesome. You'll see that coming up in uh, in just a few minutes. So, yeah. All right, thank you, John. I'm gonna leave you carry on with your video now. Folks, if you're interested in picking up a little Conway board, you can get them from terraintronics.com. Come on over. All right, now that David has schooled us on some LED basics and his Conway board, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to retrofit an existing build or to set this up for a new build. So the first thing we're gonna need is his Conway board. Again, we can wire up four LEDs to this. The next thing we're gonna need is a couple of CR2032 batteries and this holder. Now I got the holder off of Amazon. It was $5.99 for six of these, so you get this for a buck. And the Conway boards are, I think it's a pair for 15 bucks. Then you just need a couple of jumpers, some wire jumpers. There's another way to do this wiring it, um, I'll save that for a later video, but this is super easy. You're gonna wanna use some wire and do the other method if you're gonna really be running long lengths of wire throughout a build. Most likely that's gonna be for something like a diorama. Then you need a soldering iron, some solder, and then this little third arm right here is really nice to have uh, for holding the chip together nice and steady for when you're soldering. All right, so let's put all this together and see just how cool this is to be able to wire this thing up and turn it on and off with a flick of a button. Okay, so here's our little Conway board. The main things that you want to know is, well, here we are using our clay sculpting tool, even in a wiring video, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so you've got the dimmer on one side and you've got a little USB port on this side. So you could actually plug this into the wall and use this powered up to the wall if you wanted to but we're gonna hook up the CR2032 battery pack to this to kind of hide it inside of our craft. So on the side of the dimmer, there's a hole here, that's the negative, and on the side of the USB port, there's a hole here, and that's the positive. You've got the negative wire is the black, and the positive wire is the red on the little USB pack. So what we wanna do is stick the red wire, uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna stick the black wire, we'll start there first, which is the negative on the side with the dimmer. Just get that through there and bend it a little on the back to kind of hold it in place. 
and then we take the red wire and stick it through the positive on this side flip it over and just give it a little bend so that's going to kind of hold them right there for us hopefully all right now we stick this guy on here to kind of hold it in place for us two points of contact we'll hold it nice and steady that's not going anywhere now we've got this little bend here and a little bend here we're all set now we're going to put some solder on here so we had our solder iron heating up what we want to do is kind of add some heat to that contact point right there and heat that up and then just touch the solder to it it's a huge amount of solder and that looks good though all right now we'll move over to the next one clean the soldering iron you want to keep that tip clean for the most part this tip too is like absolutely ginormous for what i'm doing here i should have a smaller piece on here smaller tip i'll put a link in the description to this soldering iron with all these different tips i actually uh used my other one to burn uh some wood burning stuff so i've ruined it i need to pick some new ones up which is why i'm using this one but i'm just gonna So just leave it on that contact point just for a second or two after the solder's on there. Let it melt through that hole. And that's all we got to do for soldering. Once we flip this over now, we should see a little bit of solder coming through the hole on each side, which will show that we've got you know, good contact uh, and holding this in place. Now that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. That is all set up, ready to go. All we have to do now is plug these little jumpers right into these ports right here, these little pins, and then on and off with the switch, and we've got four powered LEDs ready to go. All right, so I know I was just talking just a few seconds ago about using this jumper here when hooking up the LED to the Conway board. But something that I realized for this particular build, because I didn't build it into the haunted house, is the little hole that I punched through the exterior wall I could still use this, but I would have to make the hole the diameter of those two little pieces right there. And as you can see right now, it's about the size of one and I don't want to make it too big. So this would be as simple. I'm going to show you right here. You just stick both of these leads just like that right into there, right? And then you stick this right on to the Conway board one and two let's get one on first just like that and that's it i'm ready to go and as a matter of fact let's wire this up and i'll show you just how this works now if that doesn't work what you do simply switch the um, led around it means you had it in backwards And then we can turn it on and you can see we've got power. Now you're like, man, that's not that bright. I can't really see it. Well, that's what the switch is for. So now we can turn the brightness up or down. Look at that, All right? Look how bright that is now. Might be a little hard to see, but let me turn this light off here. And then we can turn it down with this. Up and down. All right, so that's really awesome. And it's controlled just by this one switch. And we can hook up four of these to this one board. But again, our issue now is that I don't want to make the hole this big in my haunted house. So I wasn't going to show it in this video, but what the heck, let's go for it. So we'll pull this off. What I want to show you is this magic little tool right here that David introduced me to. We had to do a little bit of soldering for these two connection points, but now if you want to run some wire, which this is some 30 gauge wire, this cost me 10 bucks on Amazon, and this will last me, my son, my grandson, and probably his son the rest of our lives. So this is all you're ever going to need, and to connect this wire to the LED, like, well, man, now i got to solder that on there. No, you don't. This little tool right here is all you need 
without soldering. This is what they actually used to send people to the moon on their first trip. This, not solder. So um, let's jump into this right here and let's just show you how to, how to work that. So take a little bit of this 30 gauge wire. Um, how do I want to do this? Let's see. I'm going to cut way more than I need. Okay. Now this little tool right here actually has this little way to strip the wire. I actually already did that side. So let me show you on this side. And you stick it right into this little hole and just pull down on it. Look at that. It's stripped already, just like that. So that's all set and ready to go. And now we want to connect this to the LED, right? So all you have to do is stick the wire. Actually, you know what? Let's strip some more of it. That way I don't run into any issues. Look at that. Look how awesome that is. It's like addicting to mess with this. All right. Now we stick this. Let's get, let's get my lighting back on here. All right. I'm going to stick this wire right through and out the side you can see it right there right hopefully you can see that okay and then just bend it off to the side a little bit and now we stick the led right down the middle there's a hole in the middle and check this out you ready you see the you see the little wire right there hopefully let me see if you can see that there it is and we just hold this in place and spin That's it. It's on there, never coming off. That's simple. Okay, so we do this to the positive and to the negative side. So let me do that real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we've got our wire connected, we don't really need all of this other um, lead on here. And I don't think they're gonna touch but just to be safe, we could cut some of this um, lead off on the LED. But what I'm going to do is just measure off a section of this tubing. It's a little heat shrink tubing. And we're going to place this. You know what? Let's do this. Let's put the wire through the tube. Let's we'll see if that'll go. Should. Shouldn't be a problem. All right, cool. So we'll run that right through. And then put the lead through that as well push it over. All right, cool. Now we can just heat that up and we don't have to worry about these touching and then having an issue um, when we go to use it. Okay, so just like that, that's protected. Um, we don't have to worry about those touching and having some issues. Okay, now we can get ready to put this back through the haunted house wall and wire up the other end. And this is gonna be just as simple we're just going to take this end, make sure we have the right connections here, positive and negative. We can turn it on and just test it to make sure the light comes on. And just the same way as we did it on the LED, we're gonna use this tool right on the Conway board to attach the, uh, the wire. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is run the wire right through the wall here. All right. Let me just pull that right through and get these in place. All right, so the way I wired this up for all three of the lanterns was that I made sure that the blue wire went to the lead right here on my left and the orange wire went to the leads on the right. That way I don't screw these up when I'm wiring them. Okay, so real simple. We're going to put the wire in here like we did earlier and stick that right onto the Conway board and twist it on just like we did before. No soldering at all. I mean, it really can't get much easier than that. Okay, so now that we've got all the wires um, onto the Conway board, you can see I just kept it nice and neat and tidy by raveling up the extra using a little electrical tape to hold that in place. And this will kind of press into the foam a little bit, but that's not going anywhere. You can see it's all kind of held in place by the, uh, the wires coming in. And for the battery pack, keep things real simple. 
Um, I'm just going to take a little bit more of this electrical tape, and press that right into place, something like that, just to hold it there. And now we're all set with our switch. If you turn these lights on and off. All right, we are well underway in the world of electronics when it comes to tabletop crafting. Now, if you're just going to use one or two LEDs in a craft, maybe the old coin slot method is the way to go that you've seen me use so many times here on the channel. But if you want to use three or four LEDs, or if you want the capability to dim them and make them really bright, this is definitely the way to go. Now, for the first 30 people that head on over to terraintronics.com in the month of March, we'll get $3 off their first order of $15 or more. All you have to do is enter in the code TWCCONWY and you'll be all set. I'll put a link in the description below. Now also, please consider heading on over to Patreon and supporting my channel over there. It's support there that really helps the channel grow, helps me get all the supplies I need to keep doing all of these videos. And to be honest, I really love the Coven tier. It's a tier that really lets me get to know all of my patrons really well. And I'm just starting to do some live streams over there where I can interact with you while I'm doing stuff here in the studio. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.